today on Rock the Park. Oh man, you guys gotta see this. Woo, yeah! We're in the Galapagos of North America. It's absolutely stunning. You can't see it anywhere else. Where the wind and the waves and the wildlife tangle. Here goes nothing. Oh. And we get caught in the middle. Whoa! Whoa. Hey, hey. And it all starts right now. That did not go according to plan. Oh. <laughs> I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. <laughs> We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. <laughs> Get set to rock the park. We're in Oxnard, California. Ah, oh, the sea air. Catching a ferry out into the Pacific Ocean to one of the most remote national parks in the country, Channel Islands. Known as the Galapagos of North America, these islands are home to plants and animals that can be found nowhere else on Earth. The park encompasses five of the eight Channel Islands that sit roughly 30 miles off the coast, as well as a marine sanctuary that surrounds the islands. The Channel Islands are like a portal back in time to when the Southern California coastline was left untouched by development and civilization. Our plan is to dive the underwater kelp forest of Anacapa Island and then kayak through sea caves. And these things were formed over years and years as powerful surges of waves pounded up against the walls of Santa Cruz Island. Lastly, we head out to San Miguel, the furthest island out west, and go to one of the largest seal rookeries in the entire world. The Santa Barbara Channel is a popular hangout for marine animals because the island's protected from the storm surges of the open ocean. Seals, sea lions, and 27 different kinds of whales, dolphins, and porpoises live here. And they definitely aren't shy. We've got dolphins everywhere. Oh, they're like right underneath us. Look at those things. The common dolphin has a bright golden stripe along its flank and is one of four species of dolphins that hunt here. Right in this Santa Barbara Channel, there's up to 25,000 common dolphins. These super social mammals live in large pods. They feed on massive schools of small fish, like anchovies, that live in the channel. There might be a whale up here. Right in front of us, we got the whale oh, right there. Oh, right there. God. Right there. Oh. oh, come on. Yeah! The humpback whale is one of five species that migrate between the frigid waters in the Arctic and the warmth of the tropics. Anacapa Island is the smallest of the Channel Islands. Ranger Kelly Moore is a marine biologist who monitors the health of the giant kelp forest surrounding Anacapa. And today, we're hoping to help out. This is an excellent example of a kelp forest, and it's home to nearly 1,000 different marine organisms. These forests can be dramatically affected by storms and pollution, so Kelly and her team track the growth and changes of this delicate ecosystem. I hope you guys will help us collect some data or information underwater today. We'll show you how to do it and give you some tools and data sheets and take them underwater, and hopefully you know your lobster from your fish, but yeah. we'll see. We know what whales look like. <laughs> All kidding aside, we've done quite a bit of diving before, but we've never gone diving in a giant kelp forest, so we really don't know what to expect. So there's a few different hazards you should be mindful of. Kelp entanglements is one of the hazards. Keep a good eye on your buddy mm -hmm. at all times. Um, kelp is very bendable and flexible, but it's really strong and hard to break. Okay, okay. Just remain calm. Usually it will just untangle itself. There's a lot to think about on this dive, including how to get in the water. Depending on the tide, we could be looking at a 15-foot drop, and that's with all of our scuba gear on. You. All right. Oh. All right. Actually, that wasn't that bad. As we descend, we're suddenly surrounded by kelp, and it's unreal. Massive green stalks are waving in the current, and fish are darting everywhere. This is awesome. Kelly leads us down to the forest floor, about 30 feet below the surface. Swimming through the kelp forest is a surreal experience. It's daunting at first because these big plants tangle you up, but it's also fascinating to see all these different organisms that exist because of the kelp. 
Kelp is a form of seaweed that gets its nutrients from the sun. It attaches itself to the bottom of the ocean, creating a kind of root called a holdfast. Our first task is to help Kelly count how many holdfasts are in each section she has laid down. What's so difficult right now is just staying in one place. The current is coming in and out, and we're swaying right along with it. Right now, we're getting tangled up by kelp, and that is making counting these things extremely hard. Every foot we move gets us more wrapped up in this seaweed, and it's not fun. Kelp can grow up to two feet in a single day, which makes it the fastest growing species in the world. Spiny sea urchins like to munch on the holdfast until the kelp floats away. Too many sea urchins can damage the kelp forest, so Kelly has us counting and measuring the sea urchins in this section. It doesn't seem like we've been down here that long, but I look at my air gauge and realize I'm getting low. Our goal on this dive was to help Kelly out with some research. Even at 30 feet, this was easily the most challenging dive that we have ever done. Proud of you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> this experience has given me tons of respect for what Kelly does every single day. Being able to go down there and actually get work done is <laughs> unbelievable. I think the only thing that we actually did a good job at was going in the water and then coming back out. <laughs> but everything in the middle was just a messy, messy blur. <laughs> we should look at the data sheets and just see how well we did do. I marked you a got couple a couple things. things. You got some urchins, some different algae. It is a challenge if you're not used to diving in this type of environment. Mm -hmm. But you guys rose to the challenge. I had a great time watching you. <laughs> okay, so we may not be ready to apply as underwater scientists, but we do have a whole lot more of the Channel Islands to see. Nothing but smooth sailing, or not. It's morning on Anacapa Island off the coast of California, where we've just discovered that our campsite is nestled among the largest breeding colony of western gulls in the world. They are one of 69 different species of birds that live on Anacapa. The reason there's so many seabirds here on Anacapa is because there's no predators, except for other seabirds. And they're very territorial, as we're finding out ourselves. Whoa! Roughly 10,000 western gulls gather on Anacapa during nesting season, which runs from May through July. Now the park does allow visitors this time of year, but you have to make sure that while you're on the island, you're not separating the chicks from their mother. Chicks that stray too far from their nest can be killed by other birds. Hey, mom, get uh, back. Chicks, follow mommy. The gulls don't like humans coming too close either. When they do come at you, what you can do is kind of point at them. <laughs> so you, you do that, they kind of know, all right, back off. Hey, whoa, 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 hey. Saying no. Oh. 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 That, was, that was a firm no. <laughs> we've had ram jams, buffalo jams, but I, I can say we've never come across a seagull jam. All right, I think we got a clearing. All the baby chicks have moved safely off the path, so it's time to make our move to another island in the park. Santa Cruz is the largest of the Channel Islands. It's home to 60 species of plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth, including the Santa Cruz Island Fox. This little guy is roughly the size of a house cat, but he's the largest land predator on the island, so he can hunt freely. Santa Cruz is also home to one of the largest concentrations of sea caves in the world. There are more than 125 caves in a 20-mile stretch, each carved by the powerful waves that batter the volcanic rock day after day. One of the best ways to explore them is by sea kayak, and JD will be our guide. The rocks are sharp. There's barnacles and mussels up to the high tide mark. So unless I tell you, don't touch the rocks, OK? Just go ahead and push away. Use your paddle blade and steady your hand. If you do happen to fall in, let's say in the back of a cave, some place where it's kind of rocky and hard to get back in, I might say to swim out. Just let go of all your stuff, swim out towards the light. JD has planned a four-mile route. All right, JD, so where are we heading first? Uh, I'm going to take us down to this cave over here called L Cave. And it goes in this side and out the other, quite cool. So we actually get to paddle through it? I hope so. All right. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes is kind of our personal philosophy. So we're on board. 
These islands were formed by volcanic eruptions. So you've got this basalt, which is this really coarse rock already, but the water just kind of pounds against it and has turned it into something that looks pretty fierce. It's so jagged. I, I don't think we're going to want to be bumping up against the walls at all today. It's easy to stay a paddle's length away from the walls here in L Cave, but the caves get a lot more challenging. There's lots of nesting seabirds in the overhead. When they get scared, they poop, right? Yeah, I just so saw that. Don't actually. scare them and don't look up. OK, good to know. Be careful. It's kind of shallow right in there. The tide's pretty high. There's a lot of waves coming in. Here we go. I got to get through the bird zone. They're dropping bombs everywhere. Oh, whoa. One more inch, and I would have had a nasty stain on the top of my head. Even more challenging than avoiding the birds, the swells. Whoa. It's hard enough to be precise when trying to get through these tiny little cave openings. But then to add on having to time it perfectly with the waves, it can be quite tricky. Stay far left. Whoa! Jack goes through first and he slides right through. I give it a shot. OK. And my first attempt, it doesn't go so well. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's not good. My composure has just gone out the window just like that. I know what I'm trying to do. I just got a, a bad jump there. Oh, my gosh. Jeez, I am not good at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, they're back. No, no. The goals. Oh, no. I got bombed. Oh. Whoa. After a few more practice caves, we only have time for one last cave because the tide is rising. It's called the washing machine. Waves coming from three different directions. Washing really machine? Turbulent. Look at that in there, dude. It looks like it's pretty much a spin cycle today. JD has saved the toughest one for last. Oh, man. Whoa. Stay on your toes in this one. Oh, yeah. Here goes nothing. Oh, oh, no. oh. Get out of here! Yeah! Woo! Nice! Oh, man! Jack slides through again, untouched, and now I have to follow. I look in back of me and I see a wave coming up. It passes and I know that this is my chance. All right, so here goes Colton. We're in Channel Islands National Park, kayaking through a series of challenging sea caves. This one, called the washing machine, almost dumps me in the spin cycle. Whoa! 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 Get me out of there! Oh! What happened? Wow. I thought I was just golden. I thought I nailed it perfectly coming in, and then a wave out of nowhere came from behind and just smashed me, and I just went, hands first into the wall. Whoa. Oh, yeah. You're not bleeding, though, right? I'm not bleeding, no. Good. Just a little rattled, that's all. <laughs> Exploring the sea caves today was such an amazing experience. And now we're heading off to San Miguel to cap off our adventure. We're zipping out to board our boat, the conception for the 35-mile trip to San Miguel, the westernmost island in the park. Only 1,000 people a year visit San Miguel due to its remote location and extreme weather. These same conditions, however, make it the perfect spot for another kind of visit. Each year, tens of thousands of sea lions and seals gather at Point Bennett on the far western edge of the island. Anybody can visit San Miguel, but if you want to go past the ranger station, you have to have an official escort with you at all times. This is to help protect the island's delicate ecosystem and the wildlife. Marine biologist Sharon Moline is going to be our guide. Whoa. Oh. We've only been on the island for like two minutes, and already we're seeing a seal, a northern elephant seal right here on the beach. Northern elephant seals are huge, with males averaging 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. They're named for the male's trunk-like snouts, which they use to make loud roars and snorts. They're here to molt this time of year. It's kind of crazy that you can walk the beach, see one of these seals molting, and then also pick up the fur that they're shedding right off of the sand. And there'll be tons of it. It's chilly. Why would they want to lose their layer of fur right now? They need to lose it because the fur over the year 
um, becomes less and less efficient at keeping them warm and allowing them to be protected. And then they grow it all back, and then they go into the water afterwards. So it's kind of like, you know, they wear it for a while, it gets worn out, they kind of got to lose it, it get, get a new wetsuit. Yes, yeah, yeah basically, <laughs> yep, yep. That's where we start to go up. San Miguel is a sandy plateau. To reach Point Bennett, we'll have to hike up and over eight miles of rolling hills. So you can see as we're working our way up the canyon, you've got the coast right back there. It's absolutely stunning. The moment we get up on top of the hill, we are greeted with a heavy dose of wind. And you can see how it's just shaped the landscape of San Miguel. Day after day, the wind just comes ripping through here. And it's hard for anything large to take root and actually grow. So way, way out there on that tip, that's where we're heading, Point Bennett. All right, well, welcome to San Miguel Research Station. We can set our packs down, and then we'll head down to the rookery. Great. Sounds great. I can hear them barking right now all the way up here. I'm so incredibly excited. As we get closer to the cliff overlooking the beach, the barking is getting louder and louder. And then we see why. Oh, man. overlooking Point Bennett, one of the largest seal and sea lion rookeries in the world. So these down here are sea lions? Right, so these are mostly California sea lions in front of you here, the, all the tan, kind of blondish animals. These big silver ones, are those the northern elephants? Those are northern elephants, elephant those seals? are northern elephants, okay. yeah. Further out, that little tight group that's really black, those are northern fur seals. In all, six different species congregate here on San Miguel Island. At more than 150,000, this is one of the largest gatherings of wildlife in the world. This is absolutely incredible. So these all share the space together, and some of the work that we do is to look at how they interact with each other. How is it that those three species can coexist like that? Well, they're all doing different things at a different time. So. Right now, northern fur seals and California seals are here breeding. And elephant seals right now, they're just here molting. So all they want is a place where they can rest and occasionally go down to the water if they need to. Wow. And there's never a time when this is empty. There's always animals here. All year round? All year round. Since the Marine Mammal Protection Act was passed in 1972, all these seals and sea lions have been protected and their populations have rebounded. They all come to Point Bennett because the ocean supplies all the food they need and there are no land predators nearby. So why do we have to be crouched down like this? Most of these species have a fear of humans. So if you were to stand up right now, up here, everything would take off into the water and females would lose their pups and they would get trampled. I see that the water is definitely moving up. Can the pups handle being in the waves like that? They can't swim yet, they're too young, but they can be in the surf. So the females will eventually, they will work it out. See, she's picking it up by its scuff. Yeah. Oh my God. Just it's, like a dog does. Just like right down here. Yeah, she's yeah. And they'll trying try to, to grab them around the neck and yeah. just kind of say, come on, we got to get up. It's almost ironic that we have to stay hidden and quiet because this is one of the loudest beaches I've ever experienced. So it's the sea lions that are doing all the barking, right? Yes, the males are the ones that you're hearing barking, and that's how they patrol their territory. Okay. And they're displaying for the females. That's all part of their breeding behavior. Now, you can also hear the screaming. If you listen carefully, that sound. Those are the females, and they're calling to their pups. I'm in awe. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Well, you won't see it you can't, anywhere else. You can't see it anywhere else, but right here in one of our national parks. It's incredible. We stay for nearly two hours, taking in one of the world's greatest natural wonders. The amount of diversity that these islands showed us was just incredible. Getting to Anacapa and being able to go diving in the kelp forest was an experience that I've never had before. And sure, it, it was really, really frustrating, but it was great to be able to come out there and offer some help. It's so different once you actually put yourself underneath the water. 
Whoa! For me, going kayaking in those sea caves was a total rush. No matter which national park you're at, it's wild. You gotta roll with the punches, and even more importantly, you gotta learn from it. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.